Okay, welcome to Maths Live this morning on this fine Wednesday, the 29th of April. So, um, 30 days of September, April, June and November. Tomorrow is the last day of April, um, which is coming to a close. Unbelievable how fast that has gone. Friday is the 1st of May. Okay, so welcome to another day of lockdown maths. Live maths for you and me. Okay, so just a few uh, pointers. Um, first of all, um, remember that tomorrow I'll be in school, so um, that we're going to have a, a day off. Okay, and then back on maths on Friday. And remember, the there is a um, a bit of a a, a questionnaire, or oh, well, a bit of a request request for the topic on Friday. But without further ado, let's start off today with some maths music. Okay, that's from one of my favourite programmes as a child, and um, I'll give you the answer to the name of that programme, um, but um, just a little quiz there to see if you can know what that programme is. Uh, you might not be able to remember it, but parents might be able to remember that one. Okay, so I'll give you a clue on that one. Um, the uh, presenter of Radio 2 in the morning, um, um, that's this guy's daughter who presented it okay so without further ado let's get going on today's topic now something to make things a little bit more different there are three differences this morning compared to yesterday so three differences okay so um yes let's get going then see if you can work out the three differences and i'll let you know what those are bit of joe wicks there chucking that in okay so let's get going on scatter diagrams so this is all to do with one doing one thing and affecting another thing okay so let's have a few examples on the graph we can see number of baskets scored and hours practice so I'm just watching a program on TV about basketball on Netflix um, called the final dance or something like that I think it is but it's all about the Chicago Bulls my favorite basketball team okay also a Ches Cheshire Phoenix fan I used to play basketball um, so um, this relates to this very much so so I want to talk you through what's going on here. So we've got a basketball team and there's 10 players in a basketball team. And this basketball team really do vary very much on how much they practice. And then at the end of the week, they practice all week. And at the end of the week, they have a little test to see how many baskets they can score having 10 goes. OK, so they're varying skills of dedication. So first player. He wasn't really up to much. Decided to mess around, eat toast at break time. Okay, hanging around with his mates at lunchtime. So he's hardly practiced at all. But he didn't do too badly. He did get a few baskets in. Okay, or oh, one and a half baskets. Okay, we'll give him one and a half because one of them bounced around the rim a little bit, nearly went in. Another guy comes along. Oh my goodness, every break, every lunchtime he's at it. So he practices, he, six hours he practiced this dude. And when he had, he scored seven baskets. So when I'm plotting this, this guy, six hours practice, seven baskets in the test. Okay, another chap comes out long, even more practice than the other guy. He practiced with seven hours, not even on there. Seven hours altogether. And he didn't grow as good as the six hour guy, but he did all right. Got six six baskets there somebody else kind of doing all right fancied him chats off chances a little bit five hours practice didn't do too bad got six baskets okay next guy comes along okay um and um this this person well she actually let's be fair she 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 practices to three hours solid does pretty well actually it's four baskets okay another chap 
Bob Regas. Bob Regas is really keen on basketball, but he isn't bothered about practicing. He just gets away with it. So he practiced for one hour only, but he'd still get away with it. Got four baskets, Bob Regas. And six players already. Sean Cotter, next player. Okay, reasonable player. Did four hours in a few detentions this week. Okay, got five baskets. Okay. Um, next one. Sarah Blow. Sarah Blow didn't practice much, but pretty good basketballer. She practiced for two hours, got three baskets. How many have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more players. Okay. Uh, Robert Jones practiced for one hour and just got two baskets in. Paul Brentford, another chap, two hours practice and got two baskets. And there we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten players. Okay, so have a good look at that graph. What do you notice? So if we have a look at the number of hours practiced, these guys here who haven't practiced very much all week, one or two hours, the score isn't very high. These guys here in the middle practice sort of halfway for the team. Score is a reasonable amount, which is kind of halfway. Okay, there was ten shots, they got four to seven. But these guys practice really hard and they've got seven and six baskets. So it's telling the story. It's saying that the more you practice, the higher your baskets. Now that makes sense. And actually, I, I've read a few books on this. Black Box Thinking was the book that I read. Really fascinating. And it's saying you don't have to be a genius to be good at something. You just have to practice, practice, practice and practice. And there's this idea called purposeful practice. You know, not just practicing for the sake of it, just playing games or whatever, but thinking about where your weaknesses are and practicing those. Same in maths, really. If you want to do good in maths, if you want to get a decent GCSE, you've got to practice. But not practicing the things you can already do. No point in practicing um, long addition, although I would advise a little bit of practice on that. But if, you, if that's all you did, because you can do it, you're not going to improve in the other areas. So common sense, practice the things that you can't do. Same in maths, work on them, get them strong. Okay, here's one of my favorite quotes, okay, from Black Box Thinking. Practice makes permanent. Okay. So what does that mean? This means that um, if you're practicing something, um, okay, and um, and you keep practicing, you're going to get better at that. But suppose you're practicing the wrong thing. Suppose you pra you, you've picked up a bad habit along the way and you keep practicing with that bad habit in. What you find is that, you know, you still got that bad habit. In fact, you're making that bad habit worse. So it's really important to identify where your weaknesses are and work on those. And even sometimes starting from the beginning, if you're bad at something, go right back to the beginning and start again. And I can relate to this playing the flute. Um, because when I started playing the flute, I was I played as a child. I was pretty bad. So I picked it up about 10 years ago, tried to get better. And actually, I was still doing all the bad things I did as a child. So my flute teacher basically started from scratch, and I e even just working with the mouthpiece, none of the keys, breaking it down, starting afresh. That's the important thing. And that's what you have to do in sport as well. Um, okay, so stay safe, shoot baskets. Fantastic game, my favorite of all. I like football, but um, team game, basketball's it for me. So going back to this graph then, a bit more maths involved here. So we've established that the more you practice, the more baskets you score. And this has got, because you because they're getting better, each one's getting bigger, as you do more practice you get higher, this is called a positive correlation. Now the positive means you, both are getting bigger with more practice. There are things where you get smaller with practice, okay, um, and that, that's things where um, the smaller points, the number of errors um, is the, the number of points. So we'll come to those later on. But let's concentrate on this positive correlation. 
and you can see that these points they're almost making a line almost now with real life data you never actually make a perfect line well it's very rare anyway so with real life data okay chances are you're not going to make a, a, a perfect line you don't have to go through all of those points what you need to do is position your ruler and vary it okay now there are uh, there are techniques of getting this really perfect this line but for GCSE in, in for the Welsh exam board at the moment it's just a matter of getting the best line of fit you can now one thing that you really need to consider is to match up the number of points above your chosen line with the number of points below your chosen line Try so if you get one above see if you can get one uh, below no point putting a line in like that because you've got three above your line uh, well three big points so we try and get through as close as many points one massively above one massive below one massively above one massive below and don't go for your first one now misconception lots of people think you've got to go through zero that is not true you don't go through zero you concentrate on the points only now don't take your time get the right position and there is a little bit of leeway on error here so you know um, it, it, it's got to be within a certain tolerance to, to get right so I'm going for that one it actually goes through quite a few points okay and there it is my line and we call this a line of best fit we can use this line of best fit to assist us to decide which uh, you know p make predictions so if somebody else comes along and they turn to me and say you know uh, sir I've been practicing my basketball this week and I've done three uh, sorry I'll just go for 2.5 hours two and a half hours I've done two and a half hours okay and I can use this graph now to make a prediction of what sort of um, baskets will score now, I'm not saying they'll score exactly that but I've got an idea of what two and a half hours practice will give us it's useful information so if I draw a line up from two and a half here I'm making a prediction that they should be able to score between three and four baskets roughly speaking and if I'm a coach I might be thinking well you know what that's no good I need them to be scoring six and seven so I can adapt my training and get lots of information from there so it's real life maths in action okay so that's what scatter diagrams are all about and I'll just run through what's going on with this diagram here so first of all we plot the points along the corridor up the stairs okay there are certain rules with which which um, which um, item goes on each of the which variable I should say I'm just looking for the right words which variable should go on each of the axes um, and really the one you sort of um, can vary sort of goes on the x-axis and the one that can vary with a test or something like that can go on the y-axis there are more rules to, to that but I want you to get the basics this morning okay so if you're practicing and you can change something and the, the test and what you measure is on the on the y-axis um, sometimes it's very wishy-washy about what goes on each axis and sometimes it doesn't actually matter but it, it, as a general rule if you can vary this axis that's the that's the choice the variable you need there so that's how it's practiced and this one is the one you measure okay um, so summarizing then um, we plot the points along the corridor up the stairs and we see if it makes a line or it doesn't make a line then we see which like which direction the lines going in and then if we can make a line we draw the line in we don't have to go through all the points okay uh, we try and make get the, the line as close to as many points as we can thinking about the number of points above and below and we don't have to go through zero okay so once we've plotted that if it's going in that direction and you can see a line it's called a positive correlation there's also a, we can add the word strong or weak so this is very you can see a, a line clearly so that's definitely a strong positive correlation 
sometimes it, there's only just a line that you can see so that's called a weak positive correlation and uh, while I'm just summarizing things okay I might as well say what a negative correlation is so you see if you can remember this for when we do it so notice we're going upwards here while if we're going downwards on our line that would be a negative correlation and also there is an option that the points could be all over the place and we say no correlation and actually I've seen no correlation um, in lots of GCSE exams so there is a third option normally there to catch you out okay safe, stay safe shoot baskets that's my advice okay fantastic game um, fantastic thing to do just shooting baskets if you've got something if you haven't got this is a math lesson but I like basketball that much and, and it's great to play if you haven't got a basket basket see if there's something on your wall that you can aim at each time practicing um, your shots all right okay moving on let's have a look at this worksheet now there's two questions here um, this this topic actually is a little bit bigger than I thought and delivering it in one lesson is probably not the best idea so let's concentrate on number one here today and we'll do number um, three and question three on Friday so we'll take this over onto Friday as well it, it's and you know what this is a great topic for some easy marks on GCSE you just got a plot point draw a line answer some questions everyone should be able to do that it's on all of the all of the GCSE um, tiers of entry so that's foundation intermediate higher in some form or other so it's really important to get right okay so we've got two exams here plot the scatter points um, using the table below for test marks um, so these are test marks one's number one's algebra now before we start we need to have a little think about kind of what's going on here um, if you consider somebody who's really good at maths in a way they should be good at both of those things I mean when you think about it okay so if you can like do number you'd expect the algae to be good but that might not be the case it might be that somebody good at number can't do the algebra but I'm making a bit of a prediction that if they're in good at number then they should be good at algebra good at maths all around somebody who's struggling with maths might not be good at number and as a consequence might not be good at algebra so I'm kind of making a prediction a hypothesis in my own mind as to what's going to happen next thing to consider um, we've got to draw the axes in here but um, look at the numbers okay so the highest number along there is 90 so we've got to go up to 9 on the graph 90 9 spaces the highest along here is 88 well 90 got to go 9 spaces um, I could use the outside to make my graph but I'm going to go one in so I've got some uh, place some maneuverability on um, you know I'm talking about my axes here um, on putting the, um, the the scales together all right okay so that's our graph started okay now it's one of those where does it matter which one is on each of the axes which of these variables number or algebra and actually it really doesn't okay in this case because they're both tests but I'm going to put my number on the x-axis because that's along the corridor and it's the first one so it makes sense to go there and algebra along the side we're going up in tens okay 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 okay 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 okay have a closer look at that okay naught there remember something basic you know the line is where the number is don't put the number in between it's not a, it's not a bar chart okay plot these points now I'm going to go through these quickly because I'm aware of the time 
Um, and also, just need a little bit of an estimate, really, because um, when we've got 34, all right, I haven't got the proper graph paper here, so I need, just need a little bit of an estimate, so it's less than halfway. So I'll, I'll run through these quickly. 34, 25, about there. 67, 80, 67, 80, so about there. Um, 55, 45. 55, 45, right in the middle, 90, 88, so just below 90 and just below 8, 88 there, little, little cross, 90, 88, 45, so you're getting the idea, 45, 41, so, you know, if it was on Blue Peter right now, I'd have had this prepared, so here's one I did earlier, but um, I haven't, so there we go, 70, 75, 21, 12, 21, 12, Okay, 20 and a little bit over 10 and a bit up, 21, 12, 70, 65, 70, 65, doo -doo -doo -doo, there, boom, 62, 74, 62, doo -doo -doo -doo, 74, okay, and 32, 28, 32, 28. Okay, now in a GCSE exam, I think I'd be inclined to go right back to the beginning and just have a little check on each of them points, make sure I've done them right. Um, but um, we don't need to worry too much about that. Here's a close up, look at that. Technology, here's a zoom, ready? There we go, look at that. So, as I predicted, um, what we've got here is a situation where if you're good at number, look at this guy here, blooming heck, he's good, 90 in at number, but also 90 in algebra, so he's good, but then you've got somebody here who's been doing get, uh, game um, gaming, Xboxing all night the night before, Dan done any work, Xboxing, this guy, okay, not put any effort in, 22 on his, on his number, but he's also not done well at algebra. But also, what we're looking for is this connection between number and algebra. So if you are good at one, it, it, it gives you a prediction that you're gonna be pretty good at the algebra as well, okay? But I would say that is down to this. Practice makes permanent, boom. Anyway, so we've got this line to put in here. So I'm wiggling it about, um, trying to get the closest I can to as many points as I can. And I'm looking, I've got three there above, three there below, and then the others are roughly closely together. So it's something like that. Don't rush that line, okay? Um, so I could, probably should have gone a bit further below, Luke, because I've got one, two, three, four, five. So really, I probably should have gone my line. I did rush that a little bit, but it gives us the trend, okay? So the next bit is, does the above diagram show any correlation? All you gotta do here is say, it's a positive correlation. I don't know why I'm not using the lines. Come on, get, let's get this right. Positive correlation. Weak or strong? I would say that is definitely a strong correlation because I can clearly see a line Okay, so that's a strong positive correlation. Okay, you'd probably get your full marks for just positive. Okay, last thing. Now this isn't on the question, but suppose um, uh, you know uh, uh, we've got a child, okay, who does his number, and this child gets forty on his number, and then goes off sick. Okay, it's not good enough to just say algebra is forty as well because Algebra might be more difficult than number. So we can use this as a prediction. So this child has done his number and then has gone off sick and we need to do fill in the reports. We need to give him some indication of what he could get or I need to know what he could get if he had done the algebra. So I can use this as a prediction. So I'm saying this guy, did you say 40? Yeah, 40. So this guy's got 40 in his number and I'm using this as a prediction draw a line up to the graph, draw a line across, and you're talking about 38 marks there, okay? 
and likewise if they've done algebra or number so it's a really powerful tool um, correlation is and we should be really um, on the ball with this okay so that's it positive correlation okay and you can have a negative correlation that way and then no correlation so quick summary of things okay so this is all about looking at connections between two variables okay um, you, you get some data between the two variables so for example it could be um, hours practice basket scored in a test try and keep the um, the um, the independent variable and dependent variables separately. I'll go more on that on uh, on on Friday. Okay. Um, so this is the independent one. That's the dependent one. This is the independent one because that's the one you can change in practice. This is the dependent one. Try and keep the independent one on the x-axis, the one that you can change. Okay. And the the dependent one is on the y-axis, but that isn't always the case sometimes it's difficult to see which is which um, look for the connection between the two variables to see if there's a line going if there is a line which way is it going round is it a steep line going that way it's positive if it's going down the other way it's a negative okay and so on and so on um, when it asks for the um, correlation or the relationship think about the words positive correlation one other thing is make sure this is spelled correctly two r's one r okay um, and then you could add the words strong or weak although you're not guaranteed extra marks for that but it's something to consider um, to know to master this subject knowing those weak and strong words as well okay and that's it for today so um, on Friday we'll do a bit more work on this uh, looking at negative correlations and no correlations um, and then we'll have the new topics for next next time Okay, so I haven't asked any questions today, sorry about that, because there's, there's actually more information than I thought. And if we go back to right at the beginning, okay, what are the differences? So this was just for fun today, but, okay, first difference is my ruler. Okay, so I've got a clear one, and the other days I've been using yellow ones. Difference number one. Second difference, you can notice I've got the Corbett Maths pens. These are like gold Corbett Maths. I've also got the Pixel 1. Okay, um, so yesterday I used the Pixel 1. Today I'm using the Corbett 1. And the final difference, three differences, I'm using a red highlighter. Although I haven't used a highlighter, let's use one for just good fun but I had a red highlighter and the other days I've used in green so there you go three differences so we'll do three differences next week I am destined to be the Joe Wicks of maths that's my aim in life okay so um, just going on to my other question the quest the the theme that I played is called think of a number the presenter was Johnny Ball and it was one of my favorite programs as a child so that's it today folks um, we've got five watchers this morning keep spread the word around guys we need people watching this live because I want the interaction I want to build on the interaction we have a great number of people following up later on in the day I know that because I'm getting views of 30 uh, 30 plus but let's get people watching it live and then I can ask you questions and you can fill in the comment banks but that's it for today folks so I'll see you on Friday don't forget to check the Google Maths uh, Google Classrooms. Don't forget to check your pixels. Make sure you're up to date with that. And see you later, math fans. I'll leave you with Think of a Number theme tune. Din, din, din. Corbett Maths. Let's go.